our salvation is found in only one place, the person and work of Jesus Christ. That's Christianity. I have spent over 30 years serving my Lord. I have suffered terrible things. I have lost. I have been in danger in mountains and in valleys. I have suffered fevers in jungles. I have walked through malaria pits. I have been both loved and hated, hunted and applauded. I have worked at starting orphanages and taking care of street children and living with street people. And all these years add nothing to my salvation. If I died right now, I would go to heaven for only one reason. 2,000 years ago, the Son of God shed His blood on Calvary for sinners. That's my only hope. That thief on that tree and I have everything in common. There is only one foundation of our salvation, our vicarious substitute, our atonement, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. And until you understand that, until you abandon all hope in self, all hope in obedience, all hope in the fulfillment, your fulfillment of law, all hope in your own spirituality, all hope in your own mysticism, until you abandon all of it and throw yourself on the one rock that is Christ, you are not Christian. If salvation was 99.99% Jesus and 0.01% us, we would all be damned. We have only boast, one boast, one boast. We do boast, but it's one boast. It is Jesus Christ, our Lord. There are people marching in the streets demanding justice who have no justice or righteousness of their own. There are people gathered in politically conservative unions and auditoriums seeking a conservative answer to every one of our problems and they too are guilty the whole world is guilty there's none righteous there is none who understands there is none who seeks for god they have all turned aside together they have become useless there is none who does good there is not even one one of the most frequent answers I hear is that I'm good. I'm going to heaven because I'm good. Compared to Hitler, if Hitler's your standard, you may have a boast there. But if the thrice holy God is the standard, and he is, your boast has been removed. Look what Paul says in verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. What's Paul's purpose? What's the law's purpose? So that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to God. But herein lies the great problem. Man's self-righteousness. So first of all, the greatest evidence that someone is truly Christian is they have abandoned all hope in self, all hope in their own righteousness. There's only one hero in this story, and it's Jesus Christ, our elder brother, who has triumphed where all of us have failed. That is the Christian message. It is not ethics, it is not morality. Christianity is not primarily a moral or an ethical religion. It has a morality and it has an ethic that is the highest of the highest, but that's not what it's about. Is that It is a redemptive religion. We are saved not because of our work on behalf of God, but God's work on behalf of us. And even the smallest boast of self-righteousness in Christianity is blasphemy. And it's a perversion of the gospel. Now, how goes it with you? Do you have 
assurance before God tonight because you're a good man, raised in a Christian home. You don't do what others do. You know not Christ. If you were to walk up to a genuine Christian and begin to applaud them and say, you know, if anybody's going to heaven, you are. I mean, you're, you've done this and done this and done this. You're such a good person. You know what the Christian would do? Would become so nauseous so as to vomit. Would scream out and say, away from me. Enough with this blasphemy. Don't associate it with my name. I have one hope. Jesus Christ died for sinners, and I have thrown myself on him. What you need to understand, the person who believes in Christ, believes in Christ because God has done a miraculous thing in them. It's reality. It's biblical fact. They have become a new creature. It is described in the Old Testament in this way. Prior to the work of the Spirit, prior to the work of regeneration, you had a heart of stone. It was dead to God and alive to every wicked stimuli. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, that heart of stone is turned into a heart of living flesh that can respond to God and will respond to God. Recreated. Paul says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. And yes, it means that if, if, if the Holy Spirit has regenerated your heart, you are really ontologically, you are a new creature. You're not the same person that you were. You're a new creature recreated in righteousness. And a new creature is going to live a different way. A new nature produces new will new action. You will know them by their fruits. Have we truly come to know Christ? We're saved by faith alone. But how do we know we truly believe? What is the evidence of conversion? God has revealed to us who he is, his character. And God has shown us his will. So anyone who says they're a Christian and yet they walk in a manner that contradicts what God has revealed in the scriptures about his nature and about his specific will, they cannot have assurance of having come to know Christ. What is one of the greatest evidences that a person is a Christian? It's not that they're sinless, but that they have a new relationship with sin. It's like before sin and the unbeliever is walking arm in arm, hand in hand in the, in the same direction. At conversion, there's a change. They may lock arms every once in a while, but opposing directions. It's a struggle. It's a fight. So one of the greatest evidences is a new relationship with sin, but also along with that, the result of what happens when we discover that we are in sin. When the Holy Spirit reveals to us that we are in sin, how we react to that is one of the great evidences whether or not we're converted. The true believer acknowledges. The true believer, the true Christian, is the only person in the world that's not self-righteous because he is seeing his sin. The closer you come to Christ, the more light of Scripture you see, the more you're going to see the real you. And so the Christian life is this amazing, it's almost like a paradox, it's hard to describe, because what happens? As you begin to walk in the Christian life, your Christian life is basically one of repentance and faith, ongoing repentance and faith. So as you're walking and growing in maturity and you're seeing more and more of God, you're also seeing more and more of you, which results in a deeper repentance, a deeper sorrow, and a deeper mourning. 
but that mourning does not turn to despair. It is not a repentance unto death. Why? Because the more light you see of God and the more you see your sin, also the more you see the grace of God in the person of Christ and you rejoice. God has always been love, always been love. And from the very beginning, the commandment to love was there. Even in the law, even in the book of Deuteronomy, love is not a new command. That in Christianity, love is not a thing, it's everything. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's love. Young person, let, let me. Let me ask you a question. What are your friends like? If your friends love the world, act of the world, and have nothing to do with Christ, and those are the people you're drawn to, you're drawn to them because you're like them. Do not be deceived.